Welcome home. This is the Irish Roots Cafe where every day's a holiday and there's always room for one more. Come right this way, have a seat with me today in the corner booth celebrating our 91st week. Swinney clear the floor, Katie bar the door. Molly put on another pot of Irish coffee. Molly's not here today. We're going to have to do with some iced tea, I guess. It's time we get this show on the road. We've got another full house today, not a chair to spare. I'm Michael Laughlin, your host. You can reach me on my webpage at irisroots.com, and you can check out our uh, written show notes on my blog, too. Just go right to that uh, homepage of ours. And you can search our books and videos and podcasts, and I've got links for all that and so much more on our blog. So if you go there, you can see all this in writing with a few extras. Hey, and we've also got that enhanced podcast, which, which is now available on our homepage or, on, or through uh, iTunes. It just says enhanced in front of Irish families if you go to iTunes. And uh, when you listen that way, if you have quick time on your computer, you can also see pictures and have little links you can click on and go to... Uh, right there while you're watching the show. That's our newest little wrinkle. Uh, well, let's take a look and see what our topics are today. Number one, Shannon is the name of the day. Number two, Wexford Genealogy is the book of the month. Number three, Searching for Long, McGowan, and Lewis. Number four, Dunbrody Genealogical Center in Ireland. Five, Tommy Hilfiger has Irish roots. Six, O'Flaherty is honored in Killarney. And seven, Shannon Airport is the first to have U.S. pre-clearance. Hey, that reminds me, you can get all three of our uh, free uh, broadcasts online. Just click on our, uh, our, on our webpage or click on our blog and you can get there. And uh, they're, they're for free, so hey, you can't miss that. Now let's look at what notes we've got going on for this week. Hey, I, you know, I just saw a very interesting article just before I started the podcast here in the irishtimes.com. I've got that uh, uh, a link on our blog too. But they talk about the Irish, the Scots-Irish, the Presbyterian, the Catholic, and the Church of Ireland Irish in America. And they've reached some interesting conclusion, including studies that show that... Uh, Hey, the majority of people in America that claim Irish citizenship uh, are also uh, Protestant because the Protestants arrived in America at several generations earlier as a group, so to speak. If you've studied it, you know what I mean. And you never hear anybody say that, so I've got to go back and finish that article, but it sure looked interesting, so I'm, I'm including a link on our blog to see it. And they also started off talking about Anne Dunham, uh, who left Ireland in 1850, and she dis descended from Falmouth Kearney, who was Barack Obama's ancestor. And they then go on to talk about the myths of the origins and backgrounds of some of the Irish in America were not just all one kind of group. Very interesting. Hey, number two, I got a letter from uh, Seamus Hajnowski. And he said he we'd been talking a little bit through emails. He's looking for the Long family, and he thought he had them all figured out just about. And he had made the wrong assumption. And this can happen to a lot of us. He, he, he looked at a uh, long immigration record and he worked backwards. And boy, he traced it all the way back to Glasgow, Scotland in uh, 1908. And uh, boy, he had the wrong, long family as he started to look at it a little bit closer. So it was uh, his Mary Long, who he was looking for, was born to William John Long, not William L. Long. So the whole thing was thrown off, and now he's got to go back to square one in some respects. But keep all that information. You never know when those two families might intersect. Uh, and he also signs off, and he says, but at least I've found our real Irish roots, so now I guess I have to buy the families of County Down. That would be the genealogy and uh, family history uh, for a County Down, family history notes. Well, thank you, Seamus. I'm glad you're on the right track now, and you didn't give up halfway through. Uh, number three, got a little letter here from the Wicklow County Tourism. I'll include the whole thing on the uh, blog. You can click the link, and that's uh, visitwicklow.ie slash Xmas. I guess you can use Xmas on the web instead of typing out Christmas, but I think it's better to spell out the whole name. 
Uh, but they said that in their webpage, you're going to find all the information you need to know about what's happening in the Garden County, the Garden County this season, including Christmas parties, seasonal events, carol singing, festival markets, Santa visits, and great accommodation packages. So, uh, hey, why not do that? And they also have a little contest every week. They have a question, and this week's question was, who founded the ancient monastery at Glendalock? Oh, I bet a lot. I bet a lot of you know that answer if you've taken any tours over there on the east coast of Ireland. Uh, and you can enter the con- competition from their webpage, so that might be a fun little things to do. Uh, four and the last little note: a full-fledged national immigration center with a genealogy facility is planned for the Dunbrody Visitor Center in Ireland. I believe that's Wexford. And uh, they've just received a 1.88 million euro or dollar grant. I don't know where. It's probably euros uh, since that's what they're using now. So they've got a lot of money and they're going to have all kinds of exhibits. And I tell you, if you come over from America, you'll walk into one of those exhibit rooms that's planned. And uh, you'll end up seeing the streets of New York, what the Irish, uh, what your Irish ancestor might have faced if he landed in, uh, in New York. And you see the streets of New York instead of the streets of Ireland and That'll be a switch, wouldn't you? You go over there to see the streets of Ireland, and here you got the streets of New York right right before you. Uh, that's pretty interesting. I think I'll have to keep an eye on that one and go see it when they're done. Uh, now we're going to move on to the book of the month. Well, the book of the month this month is County Wexford, Ireland, Genealogy and Family History Notes. And... Uh, We'll do a little sample extract, like, I wonder what families uh, in this book, let me see, it gives us the most numerous families in the 19th century from the birth index, and who were they? And I also include a lot of those uh, uh, variant spellings after the main name, but names like Murphy, which you'd expect, and Doyle, and Byrne, and you even have Roach, and Nolan, Keel, Ryan, Bolger, and Whalen. Uh... Now let's move on to the uh, County Wexford families on the map of uh, the uh, Annals of Ireland by the Four Masters. The Connellan translation, uh, 2003 is when I put that book out. And you might find some clues there too. What families do they have on that map, which goes back a little bit further than the uh, 19th century? Well, you got Murphy still and Doyle, yeah. Well, no, wait. Oh, here we go. Brown, Butler. Butler, who was a Viscount. That means a very more important person or family. Uh, Coclo, Comerford, uh, Devereux. Boy, you've got some different sound of names and some Fitzes you got there. Fitzhenry, Fitzstephen, uh, Marischal, Masterson, Myler, Doyle, Dugan, Garvey, Larkin, Prendergast, uh, D. Renzi, Rossiter, Sennett, Stafford, Talbot, Wadding, uh, Walsh. Boy, there's a whole slew of them, and that's just part of them. But I listed all those names on the uh, the blog on our webpage, so you can check that out. And that's taken from the Annals of Ireland by the Four Masters, uh, Irish Genealogical, IGF Edition 2002 or 2003. Uh, hey, remember, coming up later in this episode, we're going to find out why Father O'Flaherty is being honored uh, this weekend in Killarney and what all why they're doing all this, and they're having all kinds of... Uh, celebrations he's been honored by several uh, countries and uh, it's all about what happened in the vatican in world war ii and how he saved some folks uh, but now it's time to raise our eyes skyward give thanks and ask for help here are today's magnificent seven well number one new member of savan yukum or ukum of West Collingswood, New Jersey, searching for McGowan and Lewis, and they were indentured servants. I think we had some indentured servants on here last uh, week. I don't know if that's the same family or not. Number two, T.J. O'Gara of Dagenham, Essex in the U.K. Your families of County Donegal has shipped. Charles A. Teeter of Plainsboro, New Jersey. Your families of County Cork, Ireland have shipped. And Eva Marie Jurison of Morgantown, West Virginia, your surnames of Ireland with all those uh, location maps in it, has shipped. And Jane E. Howe of Raleigh, North Carolina, your county Fermanagh genealogy and family history notes has shipped. Father Dan Madigan of Clarksburg, California, your passengers of Ireland and the 1659 census has shipped. And hey, Gordon Connolly of Spirit Lake, Idaho, 
Your book of Irish families, great and small, has shipped. It's good to hear from Idaho. Uh, and you can check out more of our online searches uh, uh, on the web page, and we're going to be updating that real, real quick with some more, uh, more current information here in just the next few weeks. And we're also redoing that web page and almost got the outline designed and ready to turn it over to the webmaster. It sure should be fun. If hey, if you've got any ideas or if there's anything in particular you want to see on the the web page, you email me and uh, I'll get it to you. I'll see what I can do. Uh, you might as well talk directly to me before I start. And that reminds me, thank you to every one of our members because without you, the blog, the podcast, the web page, the books, uh, none of it would be possible. You keep things afloat, and I do appreciate it. And uh, you you can help through a getting a book or through a a donation or even sponsoring a podcast there's an idea for you but now it's time to move on to the irish family name of the day the name today is shannon just like that old river shannon isn't it and today's family history is in honor of member carol shannon of st louis missouri and uh, she's searching for information on the shannons from wexford and those same uh, folks settled in Callaway County, Missouri. Now, let's see. Do we have any related spellings of the name taken from the uh, Master Guide to the Various Spellings of Irish Family Names? A link to that book's on the blog, too. Boy, which invariant spelling groups uh, 714, 1859, 1860, and 3117? Uh, so that means there's at least four different groups I captured there over time. Uh, of course, you can spell that name. Boy, if there's an I or an A, it can always be inter- interchanged with an O. And uh, Shanahan has been shortened to Shannon. And Fox even uh, has been changed or interchanged. And sometimes they just stick a Y at the end and they call it Shanny. Hey, Shanny, come on over here. Could have been a nickname. Could have been a separate name. That's why you got to research it. Uh, uh, and I've got a bunch of those spellings of the name on the blog. And, well, let's take a little, quick little look at the history of the name. Now, you know you can find at least three separate origins there, according to most accounts. And this, this is where, what we're going to take from uh, the book of Irish Families, Great and Small. And it said they can, stint, can descend from O'Shanahan or O'Shannon or MacGill Shannon. And that last one was MacGill Shannon. Uh, now, no research uncovered by anybody that I've seen so far has connected the name directly to the River Shannon. Uh, But you know what? A fellow's over here, and maybe he's by another river, or he's homesick, and he remembered that Shannon. He could have just switched his name to Shannon at any old time. Uh, One more reason why you got to research to find out. And uh, you also find that way back when, you're going to find the Shannon family uh, in Carlo and Wexford, but it's not very numerous there in uh, 1659 or in 1891 records, as far as we've got here. And spelled as the more common S-H-A-N-N-O-N, you're going to find that name more recently in Antrim, Clare, and Roscommon. Uh, now in the 17th century, you're going to find it in Cork. And also Shanahan, under various spellings, is going to be found in Limerick, Waterford, and Tipperary. So... Some of you Shanahans, you know you're going to be related to Shannons. And some of you Shannons, you're really Shanahans in disguise. So let's do a little uncovering here if you're curious. Uh, And it was Keating's History, that volume three, Irish Genealogies, I think is what said that uh, Shanahan was anglicized mistakenly into Fox and into Shannon. So there's two families that uh, for some reason, maybe Shanahan sounded like Sheenuck or the word for fox and Gaelic, uh, all kinds of mysteries that were just waiting to be solved. And, of course, the subsequently in the 19th century, the name spread out there, especially on the uh, West Coast and then even down uh, Limerick and Waterford. Uh, but the name, the m- main locations for the Shanahan name in that 1890 birth index included Cork, Kerry, Tipperary, Limerick, and Waterford. Well, that does it for the book Irish Families there. We've got a little more in the book, but uh, wouldn't want to read it all here. Uh, let's take a look, see the Irish family coats of arms. Well, we got the O'Shannon name in there, but it doesn't really give the specific coat of arms for that name. Uh, just found that in the, in the old Irish book of arms, uh, several centuries back, uh, it might've been, uh, substituted, uh, or, or, or the real, the spelling in the Irish book of arms was S E N A N or S I N O N. And that could be translated as Shannon. So another point of investigation. 
Well, before we move off of Shannon, let's go to the web page and look at that free master index search of Irish names. Boy, we find the family a hundred times or so there. And, uh, well, here we got, uh, here, Dover, New Hampshire, stronghold of the Shannons comes up. And that's from the Journey of, Journal of the American Irish Historical Society, Volume 7. And remember, you can do the same for your name. Just go to that web page and type in your name on the search and uh, see what comes up. And he also found Shannon in my Missouri Irish book. And then in my other book on uh, the Irish families on the California Trail right here in the USA, it's got T, J, and C, Shannon. Those are first initials before the name, so... Plenty of them there out there on the California Trail. Uh, the Surnames of Ireland with 200 maps in it. That book by Edward Nefsey, uh, it's in there. And the 1659 Census and the Birth Index of Ireland hold the name. So, you know, there's more than one or two folks out there by the name of Shannon. Well, it's time we move on now to the website of the week. Well, today's website is going to be on County Wexford. It's the County Wexford Heritage and Genealogical Society. That's at Yola Farmstead, Folk Park, Taggett, Ross Lair, County Wexford. And that's uh, we'll have the e we've got the email and the web page uh, on the blog. You can click right to it, and I think we've got it on. If you've got the enhanced version of this podcast, you can click on the picture there, and uh, it'll take you to it too, or should. And they're open all year round from 10 to 4, Monday through Friday, if you happen to be visiting. Uh, and they're, uh, they're a genealogical research service, really, in County Wexford, part of the big organization. And, of course, they've got birth, death, and marriage records, which is the basis of it, really. And sources like the 1654 Civil Survey, uh, the Tithe Plotment Books, Griffith's Valuation, and, and even now the 1901 Census. And on the blog, I'll go ahead and re, uh, I'll go ahead and list the uh, some of the parish uh, names and dates of the records for those parishes in Wexford, just to give you a little help. I can't sit here and read them all. I'd uh, I'd go hoarse, and then everybody that's not from Wexford would say, "Boy, I, I don't care about that. Read my county out." So today we'll just leave it on the blog, and you can go there if you want some more information. And I hope you do. Boy, this moves us up to what? Man, we're already towards the end of this broadcast. Curious news and notes. Well, what did I find out this week? I found out that Ireland's first ever homegrown youth TV channel is available online at uh, uh, mitv.ie and also on channel 100 on the Magnet Infinity TV network. Uh, that should be an interesting, especially since it's homegrown. You know, us Irish have a particular way of doing things, and it just might show up on that television channel. Number two, Tommy Hilfiger made his first trip to Ireland last week. That's the fellow that designs all those clothes for folks. And you know, he's got 12 independent stores in the country of Ireland. And he revealed on his trip that he came along with his model, supermodel wife. Uh, he revealed just, just recently here that he had ancestors in Ireland, and he noted that on his next trip, he just might like to look up some family there. But not this trip. He had plans, I guess. Uh, now, he said that they, his great-grandmother on his mother's side came from Cale, County Cork, and his paternal great-grandfather was James Garrity, uh, originally from Westport County, Mayo, uh, before they immigrated to Wisconsin in the United States of America. Number three. There's a new website out there for those interested in Dingle County Cary in that area. It's called tourdingo.com, T-O-U-R-D-I-N-G-L-E.com. And it was put together by Pat and Lisa Hennessy over there. And they help arrange a holiday packages for those who'd like outdoor activity. So it'd be more than just your normal old in indoor activity if you contact them. They might have some special events they could hook you up with. Number four. Did you know now that an officer can close Irish pubs for up to 24 hours and the reasons include creating a disorder or a noise nu nuisance or if a disorder is imminent, which requires a bit of psychic intuition, I think. Can you imagine an officer O'Reilly walking in and saying, well, I think a disturbance is imminent here, so I'm shutting you down for 24 hours. 
That's an interesting little bit. I don't know if that would stand under the, the scrutiny of the courts uh, too well, but I can see where it would have to be used a few times if you know a rough gang was coming in, huh? Number five, Joe Biden, the first Catholic U.S. vice president, according to reports, uh, he has now gotten his secret code name from the Secret Service, and his code name is Celtic. Isn't that isn't that interesting? So much for secrets. I don't know about that. Uh, how can you broadcast a secret code name from the Secret Service and still have it be secret? Well, that's just one of those uh, mysteries, I guess. Uh, number six. Good news if you're flying out of uh, Shannon Airport to the U.S. Uh, they have been named the first pre-clearance facility for U.S. bound flights outside of North America. And that means that all those necessary inspections can be made at Shannon before you land in New York. Uh, hmm, and it reduces all those inspection delays that you have to stand in those lines for. So, and, and, and Shannon's the very first one to be announced to have that right outside of uh, North America. So all you folks over there in Ireland, you might have a quicker trip coming back, and that's good news, isn't it? Well, let's, uh, we're going to end it up here with something... Uh, how about that? This fellow was born in North County Cork, but he grew up on Hen Street in Killarney, and he saved thousands of lives in World War II as a priest in the Vatican. Monsignor Hugh O'Flaherty is being honored as, uh, as I write these words, and his exhibits, exhibits on him in, in Killarney are being shown, and they've even wrote, named a road after him now. That's pretty good. And just who was this fella? Well, if you've seen the film The Scarlet and the Black, uh, this is a movie of his heroic actions, and he's said to have saved over 6,500 people, and that includes Americans, British, Jews, uh, during the war. And uh, for more information, I got a link on my blog, and I think that was the first link on my Enhanced Podcast, too. You can go right there, and I, uh, they've got a good little story on the independent.ie uh, news that was under Hero Priest. Uh, but, boy, I tell you, that was a heck of a movie, and uh, it really was some suspense there, and I can imagine how tough that would have been. But our salute now to Monsignor Hugh O'Flaherty, who uh, did a heck of a job during the war. Well, that's going to wrap it up for the day. Uh, I told you Molly wasn't here with the Irish coffee. She took off to uh, to Boston and then jumping up over to uh, uh, Shannon and going to be staying over there in County Kerry. So she'll be making the coffee for those folks over there. We'll have to find somebody else to uh, just help us out here for nine or ten days because the customers have grown accustomed to that special mix of Irish coffee, and you got to have the real cream on top. Uh, boy, they do it up fancy. Well, remember to send your comments by clicking the contact link on our webpage at irishroots.com or send by mail to our American address, the Irish Roots Cafe, Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri 64116. Leave your message or report on things in your part of the world when you call my phone recorder at 816-256-3360 and you can Skype me at Irish Roots Cafe. Members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way, a big thank you to all of our members. And away. <laughs>